Thanks for clicking on the final part of our pre-hard mode let's play. So in this episode I show off a new NPC, I kick the wall of flesh's ass, and I also check out some world generation questions that all of you have been asking me. So it's a pretty rounded episode, thank you all for watching, and if you want to see the bulk of the stuff, once again it's towards the end of the episode. Enjoy! Wow this should really make his name be Chippy, I'm just saying. Okay so we finally found the uh, goblin tinkerer, let's take a look what he sells. Uh, we actually want to buy some rocket boots. Oh damn, I put my, all my gold away. Hmm. So uh, we want to get some rocket boots and a Tinkerer's workshop, so hopefully he moves in. Also, another NPC just moved into the house. We're actually going to head back now and take a look at what he is. Okay, so this little guy just moved in. He's called Martino. And what he actually does is... I know the difference between turquoise and blue-green, but I won't tell you. <laughs> and what he does is he sells all the painting stuff. Now, I'm not sure exactly what made him spawn. All I did was really make a house. He also sells two posters, uh, Daylight and First Encounter. So yeah, so we'll we'll have a mess around with paint at some point. Okay, now we're going to do some crafting at the Goblin's Tinker Shop. And uh, one of the things that I found that I forgot to mention was... Uh, oh, I've already put it in. The water walking boots. Now, I forgot to mention that I actually had these. I came back and put them in a chest. And then when I was editing, I accidentally cut out the footage. Which is a, a pad move on my part. So, we've got a Goblin's Tinkerer's Workshop here, and now we're going to do some things that are quite interesting. First off, I just want to mention that the Spectre Boots can be made from both Hermes Boots and Rocket Boots, and Flurry Boots and Rocket Boots, so they really do have no difference. So, personally, I don't know which one to go with. I'm going to go with the Flurry Boots. Okay, now the next thing we can make is this. The Obsidian Walker Walking Boots. And as you can see here, the water walking boots allow you to walk on water, and if you combine it with an obsidian skull, it allows you to grant immunity to fire block and provides you to walk on water. Now the next step, if we combine the lava charm that we found last episode and this, we get the water, <laughs> sorry, the lava waders, which provides the ability to walk on water and lava and grants immunity to fire blocks. So we'll take them. So that's what we're going to use to fight the wall of flesh and hell as well as a, uh, a water bolt. So other than that, we still have our cobalt shield and I still have the arcane climbing claws. So if we find anything better when we're down in hell, we'll, uh, we'll see if we're gonna keep them or not. Okay, so this is a perfect example of the water walking boots. As you can see where I flooded hell last time, it allows us to walk on it. So if we jump down here, we can still walk on it. Now because I have rocky boots and this feature, what I'm going to be doing is getting the hellstone I need for a hellstone pick, because I'm going to need that for hard mode of course, but I'm also going to be scouting around for anything interesting in hell, so if I find anything cool, I'll let you guys know. Okay, so I seem to have found one of these new hell kind of dungeony kind of things, so if I try getting without letting the lava in, like so, Come on. yeah, I did it. Uh, we'll actually see that inside we have a few new things. We've got the new hell forges, which uh, have a new change. Uh, everything looks just a little bit different. Let's uh, clear out that room before. Got new painting, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. We'll have to pick up a hell forge as well because we're, we're going to need one. And the hell forge trick still works if you take away the block underneath it. Okay, so we found another one and another shadow chest, and we found the dark lance, which is going to be really, really good for. Uh, for when we hit hard mode. Is there anything else in here? I don't believe so. Nope. Okay, so I found this, and it's the exact same as the others, but I thought it was quite interesting just the way it's spawned. As you can see, it's kind of a uh, floating in midair and it has this under section. It's actually really cool. So yeah, I'm a big, big fan of these new, uh, these new hell areas, I guess. Okay, looks like we've got another shadow chest. Ah, nice one, a flame lash. Let's stick that there. Another shadow chest. Ooh, a fire flower. Let's get rid of some of this ash. And I'm sorry for all of you that keep complaining about my inventory. I'm really crap at it. I'm so sorry. Okay, so let's see if we've got enough stuff for uh, for the molten pickaxe. Hopefully, I got enough obsidian. That was my big worry. Yeah, fifty should be enough. Uh, let's go to the anvil. See what we can make. And there's our beauty. Thank you very, very much. Now, we need to go kick the wall of flesh's ass. Okay, guys. Here goes nothing. And uh, how do I throw this? Like this. Here we go. Which way will it come? <laughs> oh, 
them that way, and I took up them before potions didn't do me many times. that this happened then. Okay. We are now officially in hard mode. Which unfortunately means that I can't continue today. But I get to continue into hard mode on October 1st. So, as a special treat, what I'm going to be doing is ending with answering a bunch of questions that a lot of people have been asking in the comments about uh, world generation and stuff. And I'm also going to be checking out some things that I missed in my playthrough. So, We'll begin that now. One question I got asked is, if I made a large map, would I be able to have Crimson and Corruption? So I actually don't know the answer, so we're going to test ourselves. Okay, so I can confirm through the use of developer tools that, in fact, the Crimson and the Corruption are not on the same world. You either have Crimson or you have Corruption. And as you can see, when you have a large map, all you have is a few different, like, offsets of Crimson. Look, like uh, one of these. You only get one of these in a small world, and I'm guessing you get two in a regular world. Another thing that I forgot to show was the uh, the cloud biome. Look at this, it looks actually really nice. Uh, inside that chest you don't need a key anymore, and inside of it is a red balloon, but I'm not opening my inventory. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, you can actually mine this uh, stuff as well. You can mine the cloud, and uh, I believe you can make it stop raining and stuff if you mine it away. Yeah, you get, you get specific rain clouds that drop just rain. So yeah, that's about that. Okay, so one last thing I forgot to show was the actual bee biome. Now, uh, what I've done is I've just teleported into this one, but I just wanted to show you what it's made of. And uh, my plan was to originally show you this on the world that we did our Let's Play on, but I couldn't find one. So, you get Hive. Now, every time you mine Hive, there's a slight chance that you'll either get a bee spawn from it, or some honey. So, another thing, if you let water touch the honey liquid, it actually creates the block version of honey, which is actually really, really hard to walk on. It's actually really, really slow, and it just feels awful to jump on, so it's probably best that you get rid of this before the fight. Okay, so I've just killed the Queen Bee, and it drops a bunch of stuff. First off, it drops Bottled Honey, which restores 80 health. It also drops, uh, and this is sometimes, it has a few different things. The Hive Wand, which allows you to actually place Hive, like so. Uh, another thing it drops is these bee nades and the Bee Keeper, so we're going to have a look at these. Now, it can drop other stuff, but I'm not doing this fight multiple times. Uh, you'll get to experience all the new things when you do it yourself. So uh, let's show off the bee nades. These are actually really, really awesome. Okay, so you see this guy? We took a bee nade at him, and uh, all these swarm of bees come out and attack him. It's actually really, really cool. Uh, I think it does it all the time. So, yeah, so every time a few bees come out and attack the enemy. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this little let's play. Like I said, I'm going to continue when uh, I can actually show some hard mode stuff. And until then, I'm just going to be trying to post any kind of videos that you guys will need for 1.2 when it's out. So, that's going to range from guides, tutorials, to news, to anything. So, make sure you subscribe if you're not already. I've got some of the best Try 1.2 content coming out over the next few weeks. And you guys are really going to love this channel. Thank you for watching. Peace. Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on the episode. So in this episode, I go check out the new 1.2 dungeon, which is pretty damn cool. It's been revamped and it's all aesthetically changed. I also go back to the jungle and we take a look at some jungle huts and take a look at some new items there. And I also prep the world for Wall of Flesh. So, all that to come. If you're not into watching a whole 11 minutes, the bulk of the stuff is at the end of the episode. So, thank you all for clicking. Enjoy. Okay, so I want to tie up some loose ends and one of the things I didn't show yesterday was the flare gun.